Welcome again to Midweek Prayer. Uh, me on my own again, but it just seems easier for us to do it this way and still involved in uh, putting the videos uh, together and editing it all. So it's a, it's a joint effort. That welcome. As we continue to go through very difficult times, as the war in Ukraine goes on, the awfulness of it gets worse and worse and I'm very aware that we need to care for ourselves as well as continue to be open to God um, in this situation and I found myself saying to people earlier today you know if the news is too much just, just don't don't watch it for a bit until you're recovered. Yeah, it's good to keep in touch, it's good to keep on praying for Ukraine, but we need to care for ourselves as well. So our Gospel reading, I think, uh, connects very much with um, the situation and understanding the situation um, and thinking about our response. But um, let me start with the prayer for today, which I think helps us to think about uh, the sufferings of Christ being the, the sufferings of Ukraine. Almighty God, by the prayer and discipline of Lent, may we enter into the mystery of Christ's suffering and following in his way come to share his glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's uh, enter into uh, this wonderful old hymn, O love that will not let me go. Even in times of great difficulty, God's love does not let us go. Wilt not let me go. I rest my weary soul in thee. I give thee back the life I owe, that in thine ocean depths its flow may richer, fuller be. all my way, I yield my flickering torch to thee, my heart restores its borrowed ray, that in thy sunshine's blaze its day may brighter, fairer be. Seekest me through pain, I cannot close my heart to thee. I trace the rainbow through the rain, and feel the promise is not vain that morn shall tear us. that liftest up my head, I dare not ask to fly from thee, I lay dust life's glory dead, and from the ground there blossoms red, life that shall end. So our reading is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 13, uh, verses 31 to the end, I think it's 35, uh, those five last verses. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, get away from here, 
Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow and the next day, I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me again until the time when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Loving God, help us to share your compassion and the depths of your love for us and for all people so that we may reach out with your love. For Jesus' sake. Amen. So in that reading, uh, we see, I think, something of the heart of Jesus. And that gives us clues to one of the knottiest problems of faith. And all this shows us that we need to take action for Jesus' sake. The passage begins with some Pharisees coming to Jesus and it's thought that they were coming out of genuine concern for his safety. And well, they might when Jesus stands up to Herod the tyrant and calls him a fox. That would not go down well when he heard it. And Strangely, we have two animals now, Herod the fox and Jesus the hen. And there is a sense in which uh, the people of Jerusalem choose whether they want to be led by a fox or a hen. And we too are drawn into making that choice. Do we want our lives to be shaped by foxes or by a hen? Sadly, Herod was not the first or the last wily political leader to use power for his own ends rather than for the good of his people. But conceiving of Jesus as a mother hen might be a little troubling to us. Um, if you've got a moment, Google uh, hen with chicks and there are lots of pictures of a hen with chicks underneath. I don't think I've ever seen one in, in real life, but there are lots of images. And, and just think, how do, how do you get on with that image? I have to say, I found it quite difficult conceiving of God in this sort of way. And remembering that hens can be quite fierce in protecting their, 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 their chicks. But it was just, it was amazing to see them fluffing themselves out and letting the chi chicks underneath their feathers and, and then underneath their wings. I think we're missing something if we can't conceive of God in this sort of way. Because there is something deeply vulnerable about Jesus. And he comes to us reaching out with vulnerable love, love that will not let us go. Uh, and Je Jesus' lament, lament, lament for Jerusalem shows his loving care. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I 
desire to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. This is how God feels about his, his, uh, his people. He loves us deeply and longs for us to receive his care, to know that we are loved, but we find, find it hard. There is something in me that certainly for many years would rather conceive of God as an angry father than a loving mother. Now, I know it says a lot about my psychology and experience. And it seems so strange, but it seems to be true, not just for me, but for other people as well. It's taken me many years to know more deeply that I am loved by God, which is something probably why I preach about it so much. I think to, to understand that, I think I've known in my head that it was true long before I knew in my heart and in my soul, in that deepest place, that I'm loved and accepted by God with a love that will not let me go. In some senses, I've been preaching it to myself until it's been true right down there. And if, if you connect at all with what I've said about the, the, the sort of angry God rather than the loving God, how could you make some progress? Could this season of Lent be a time when you wrestle with What's holding me back from knowing that I'm loved by God? Because there may be some things, once you've realised what they are, you can um, let go of them a little bit more easily. And we do need to make a choice between being led by a fox and a hen. And it is thought that Jesus' lament for Jerusalem uh, was in part because he was looking forward 40 years to the time when the Roman army barbarically, brutally crushed a freedom movement in Jerusalem. On a smaller scale, but in a similar way to what we're seeing in Ukraine at the moment, of, of cities being demolished by shelling, indiscriminate shelling and bombing. It, 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 it's almost too much to, to watch at times, but that is what is going on. And God sees that suffering and God cares God's heart is breaking for the people of Ukraine. But we want to say, and so many people have said it to me over the years, why doesn't God do something? And, and maybe we need to say that to God ourselves. Lord, why are you not doing something? Lord, have mercy on those people. I think there is something in this passage for us. Because Jesus' lament also shows something of the limits of God's power. He desired to gather his people, but they were not willing. God never forces us. His love will never let us go but he does not force us to accept it. And this is a, a knotty problem of faith, um, often called the problem of evil. How can an all-powerful and all-loving God permit so much evil and suffering 
in the world. There is no satisfactory answer. It remains a mystery. It's the mystery of suffering, of our suffering, of Christ's suffering. So don't expect too much, but I find this idea helpful. God in his almighty and all-powerful nature, in order to love us, forego some of that almighty power in order that we should have freedom, freedom of choice. And choice is precious. The choice to elect um, our leaders is precious. Democracy can be messy, as we know. But when we look at the alter alternatives, we say how vital it is, how vitally important it is to live in democracy. And for parents, for loving parents, when the time is right, need to let their children choose, to make mistakes, H however hard that is. They need to bite their tongue and say, you, you choose. God is vulnerable to our rejection. And we see that powerfully in the life of Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus makes himself vulnerable by becoming like us in order to come to us in love. In Philippians uh, it says, Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking a form, the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. And it's thought that in that passage in Philippians, it's Philippians 2, first few verses, well, quite so sort of maybe 1 to 12 or something of, of Philippians 2 if I remember it rightly. Um, it's thought that Paul is actually quoting an earlier writing, which is, you know, it's because Paul would have been writing quite early. And this was a, a hymn that was already written oh, with such profound understanding of God. Uh, and, and he's quoting that. God becomes vulnerable in order that we should know that we are loved and so that we can be like Jesus, reaching out with vulnerable love to those around us. And, and connected with me, we need to be making ourselves vulnerable in doing something for Ukraine and the people of Ukraine. First, we should be praying as we are able, alone or together, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's hard, it, as I said, when the news is so awful. Give yourself a break at times, but then return to pray, to prayer. I, I've just been using the word mercy. I suppose it sort of stands for Lord have mercy, but just using that word as I breathe, mercy, mercy, mercy. Second, if, if you're able to, and not everyone is, because prices are spiralling, but to give to organisations who are supporting re uh, uh, refugees. And the message is that money is the most useful thing we can give. There may be things you've got, and, and there are people who are taking things, but money is the most useful thing. But that is only a start. Keeping on praying, keeping on giving. But I think we need to be ready to do more. This war is serious, deadly serious. It is having huge consequences. People are talking about World War III, and I, and I think they may be right. It's horrendous to think of it, but 
think they might be right. And we need to think how we could respond. And, you know, we can't do the impossible. You might say, I, I just can't. I, I don't have a spare room. I can't take a refugee in. But maybe you could offer some hospitality to a refugee. Maybe you know someone locally who, who might be able to take a refugee and you could do something to help because together we can share out the burden. It's responding as God would have us respond. And if you've, well, Google that uh, hen with chicks and, and just think, how can I respond a little bit like that? What is God calling me to do? Not the impossible, but something. Maybe go to a peace vigil or something. What can you do? So that we may have courage to grow in embracing God as God is, with his amazing power and love, and his vulnerability so that we can reach out with that vulnerable love in practical ways as God in Christ reaches out to us with his love. suggested in my talk and, and just breathe with the word mercy. 
mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on Ukraine. Or just mercy. Loving God, we come to you with a burden beyond words. Our hearts are breaking at what we are seeing and hearing. We call on you to have mercy. And we invite you, loving God, to move us to think how we might have mercy we might work out what we could do in our circumstances with our resources limited or, or however they are could we just show that we are standing with the people of ukraine let god just prompt you to something that you might do as we continue to ask God to have mercy on that country, to have mercy on the refugees fleeing to the countries around, Western countries around Ukraine, and on into Europe, to our own country, that we as a country may have mercy on those people and not put barriers around our country. The politicians may get the mood of the nation that wants to respond. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Show us how we may put mercy into practice. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as we pray for Ukraine, we pray for other countries which have been devastated in, in, in similar ways. Syria, Chechnya, the Yemen, Afghanistan, our friends in Zimbabwe, different situation desperate need. And we also pray for those we know and are concerned about, those who are ill, those who are, are, are depressed and struggling with the situation at the moment. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Loving God, give us grace to continue to pray, but also to continue to hold on to your love and to the hope that we have in you that we may walk with Christ, that we may journey with Christ. That we may learn of his love in this season of Lent. For Jesus' sake. Amen. Now we join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so may God give you grace to know more deeply that you are loved by God and to share that love in practical ways, to be vulnerable as you reach out in love. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And our final hymn, uh, Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Or is it <laughs> Hold me with thy powerful hand Bread of heaven, bread of heaven Feed me now and evermore Feed me now and evermore Open thou the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow let the fiery cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through strong deliverer strong deliverer be thou still my strength and shield be thou still my strength and shield when i tread the verge of jordan bid my anxious fear subside Death of death and hell's destruction Land me safe on Canaan's side Songs of praises, songs of praises I will ever give to thee I will ever give to thee YouTube.